Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to put ChatGPT into an application to achieve something like this. Oh great, can't wait to be immortalized in a video that will probably get 10 views. I'm going to run you through setting up an account with OpenAI to use ChatGPT. We're going to get an API access key. I'm going to show you how to make requests in Postman. I'm then going to show you how to integrate that into an application. And then finally, share some tips and tricks on what you should be aware of when using this API endpoint. So I hope you're ready, let's jump into it. We're gonna start by going to the OpenAI website. Click Login. Now if you don't have an account, just sign up for one. I'm gonna use Single Sign-On. And we wanna click on the API. ChatGPT's API is a paid service, so the first thing we have to do is give them a credit card or sign up to the free trial. So if we head over to Settings and click on Billing, we want to add credit to our balance, so add some money into your account, or click on the option to use the free tier. I don't have that available anymore, however, when I first signed up, they did offer three months free credit up to 20 US dollars. I'm hoping that is still an option available for you guys to use. Next, you want to head over to API keys and create a new secret key. Give it a name and hit create secret key. Essentially, Whenever you make an API request to ChatGPT, you are going to have to put this secret key in your authorization headers so that it knows who's making the request. And this is essentially how they track this for billing purposes. You wanna keep this key completely secret, please don't commit it to a public repo or put it anywhere where people can get that secret. Otherwise, other nefarious people can use your API key and you will just foot the bill for it. Once you've signed up for the account and you've got your API key, we are going to head over to Postman. Now, if you're unfamiliar with Postman, it is a great free piece of software where it lets you make API calls, and that's what we're gonna use. We are going to make a post request, and this is the endpoint that we want, V1 chat completions. We're gonna go ahead and send the request, and we'll see that we didn't provide an API key. So what we need to do is we need to head over to authorizations. We want to go bearer token and you want to copy and paste the value of that secret key in here. Now, if we go ahead and send it authenticated, but we got a 400 bad request and that's because we didn't send anything in our body. So we're going to head over to body, click on raw, click on JSON. And we're going to start with the very basic body. So we're going to use the GPT 3.5 turbo model and the message is what we're sending to the API. So here we are saying the user would like to know, tell me a dark joke. If you go ahead and click send, you will then get a response where the content is the response. Why couldn't the bicycle stand up by itself? Because it was too tired. Now you can click send again and again and each time you will get a slightly different response. In this case, why was the math book sad? Because it had too many problems and we can change the content to ask any other question. Now, when it comes to roles, you have three options. There's system, and this is kind of a precursor to how you want the AI to interact with you. You could set the system up to say, respond as if you are Jimmy Card, the comedian, or respond in a really light, funny, humorous way, or respond in a way that is very dark and edgy. You can set up and preemptive the kind of responses that you want the AI to generate. This is incredibly important, and I'm gonna show you this very shortly. Next, you have the user role. So this is essentially what has the user asked the AI, and then you also have the assistant role. So this is, what did the AI respond with? And we're gonna have a look at how that hangs together. So instead of tell me a joke, if I ask it a question like, am I pretty? We'll see what the default response is. I'm sorry, I can't judge your appearance, okay? Now let's tweak the system parameter, the way we want it to respond. So what we are going to do is set a role for system and the content, what we want it to behave like is we want it to be a really supportive and caring partner. And then the user is going to ask that same question again. And now the response is a lot different. Absolutely. You're incredibly beautiful inside and out, etc. And you can obviously do the exact opposite. So instead of being supportive, you can be mean, rude, sassy, and take the piss. 
which gives you responses like this. So system is how we can predefine how we want our application to respond. And this is incredibly important because if you're making a joke application like Sassy GPT, you want the responses to be really witty and fun and kind of a little bit edgy. However, if you were making, I don't know, an AI that was politically responsive in its responses, you would want to train it to lean left or right as an example, depending on your desired outcome. Now, the final role is the assistant role, and this is the response. Now, where this comes in handy is when you want to track the conversation history. Every single request that you make to the API is individual. So if you send two or three requests, ChatGPT has no idea or knowledge of the previous request. So if you're making a chat-based app where you want the conversation to flow more freely, you're generally going to want to save some of that conversation history. And this is the way you do it. You have the first message the user asked. In this case, the user said, hi. The assistant responded, hello, how can I help you today? And then the user asked, hey, what did you just respond with? When you send off the request, it knows, it has awareness that it said, hello, how can I assist you today? Which is exactly what happened there. So within the request, if you were to have a conversation flow, you would simply keep appending objects to this array, like such, and eventually it would look like this. A key consideration when you are doing this is how much conversation history you want. The bigger the conversation history, the more tokens it is going to take to complete the task, which means it's going to cost you a bit more money. In the original request where we only had a conversation history of one or two messages, it took that 44 total tokens. However, if we send something a lot larger, it will use a lot more tokens. In this case, it's taken 270. So you definitely want to be capping the conversation history flow within your app by capping the amount of messages you append to your array. For me personally, I think I cap this at five or six. But you can also do something cool within the request itself, and that is you can set the max tokens variable. I found 200 tokens to be a great value to use. I was getting good responses while still remembering some of the conversational history flow. So when making requests, you definitely want to set that max token because a user could potentially say, hey, give me a million word essay from ChatGPT, and it could use a bunch of tokens which you don't want. If you had max tokens set to 200, it would just cut the response off. So now that we know how to interact with the API, let's actually build out an application and start using it. We're going to head over to this GitHub page and have a look at this example, which gives us a Node.js web app example of how to use this API. We're going to go ahead and clone the repo. So we'll run a git space clone and paste the URL. Open up a code editor. Here's the code locally on my machine. Now we want to go ahead and follow the instructions. So we're going to go ahead into the directory. And we're going to run npm space install, which is going to install the required packages that we need for this to run. I'm on a Windows machine, so I'm going to go ahead and copy this environment file. They have an example one for you. Uh, get rid of the dollar sign at the start. And we're going to go ahead and add our API key to that environment file. We'll open up that .env file and paste our key in here. Now we're going to run this command, npm run dev. And copy this. So we're going to have a look at our actual web application up and running. All right, cool. So we're going to type a message. This is what we've told the system to be. You are a helpful assistant. What color is the sky? Send, and we should get a response. That's pretty cool. We now have ChatGPT hooked into a Node.js web application. Now let's tinker with it a bit and see what we can do. We're going to hit clear, and we're going to go into our code base. Let's take a look at this. So if we head over to pages, index, Actually, you know what? We just want to search for this. So I'm going to do a global search by holding down Control, Shift, and Find. I'm going to paste in you are a helpful assistant, and that is what we're defining for our system. And I am going to replace it with 
you're a supportive partner. And replace all. Hit replace. Now the responses will be in that supportive partner frame. I'm feeling down today. Kind of supportive. Instead of a supportive partner, you're an edgy comedian who likes to make a lot of fun, will replace everything. I'm feeling down today. And now let's see what we get. And there you go. You have a web app that responds in a particular way. Now, a couple of ideas. Essentially, you want to fine tune that system parameter to give responses in a way that you want that aligns with your particular application. For example, if you had a dating app, you would want it to curtail the dating advice for the particular demographic that is asking the question. Conversely, you might have an app that has motivational quotes and maybe you wanted to provide motivation and philosophical points of view to questions asked. So you would set that system parameter accordingly. Now, if you're wondering how much all of this costs, with my max token set at 200, I've had my app up and running in the App Store for over three or four months now with about a couple hundred users over that entire time frame. I've made several hundred requests myself and I've only spent about 20 or 30 cents off of my bill. It's quite a cheap API to use, so you don't really have to worry from a pricing point of view as long as you've set that max tokens. However, there are some things to be aware of. Some things I have noticed personally is the API can sometimes be slow to respond. Most times the responses come back within a second. However, I have noticed the odd occasion where responses can take quite some time, sometimes five and even up to 15 seconds. So you will have to build your app accordingly and have loading screens and some kind of indication to the user that something is happening behind the scenes. The other thing to be aware of is it is not the most stable API. When I was actively developing my app, I noticed over a period of 90 days, the API actually had issues on four of those 90 days which meant my app was unusable during that period of time. And the other thing I observed is there is heavy censorship when it comes to the API chat completions. When I wanted to program my app to be really edgy and mean and rude, I had to be very careful with the keywords that I used. Rude, for example, it didn't seem to like, and sometimes it would inconsistently respond with, oops, I'm unable to fulfill your request. Essentially, the safety mechanism kicked in because I was asking it to be rude, which goes against what it's trying to achieve. But it was weird in the sense that nine out of 10 times with the exact same message prompt, it would go through, but only 10% of the times it would get stopped. So if you're trying to create something that's slightly on the border, like really edgy, dark, or things that may be questionable, You'll have to do many tests over and over again to make sure that your prompts go through successfully and it doesn't get flagged. So just keep that in mind. But overall, the API endpoint is well documented and I had a lot of fun building out this app. It's something I highly recommend you do. It is quite fun to learn. Like I mentioned, the only thing I didn't like was the lack of stability and the censorship around it, which hopefully we can get around with in the future when large language models become available locally on our machine, open source for everyone. So that's all I had for you guys today. If you have any questions about this or anything, leave a comment down below. I hope you enjoyed this one and I will catch you in the next one.